Hello, what's up guys, it's Legendary Vendetta, and this is kind of a crossover. This is kind of Legendary Tactics, but at the same time it's going to be um, just a normal battle replay. So, I'll kind of name it Legendary Tactics, but um, really, you know, it's it'll be an interesting battle for you to watch, I think. I certainly enjoyed playing it. <laughs> um, okay, here we go. So, it's me, Vendetta, versus Sada ba Evs. I'll call him Sada. Sada. Sadab. Sadab. I'll call him Sadab. Okay. So we're on Rice Hills. Rice Hills is a decent map, as I was saying before. It's a nice flat surface, so, um, you know, cavalry can really be used to its max potential because there's no rivers. Uh, not too many trees in the centre ground where you're going to be doing a lot of your fighting. So, you know, it's going to be a good sort of map to play on if you're a very cavalry oriented player. Now, this was with my um, Captain Cabinet General. I actually played this a few weeks ago, and I've been meaning to do this battle so much. Um, and yeah, this is kind of going into the analytical stage of, um, of Legendary Tactics. So we're going to be looking at battles, seeing what's good, what's not, how you should conduct yourself, your units, and, um, you know, just show you what's possible or what's good about, uh, certain tactics. So let's go through the armies. So I've got Captain Cabinet. I think this is when I was a bronze general. I'm not entirely sure. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was when I was bronze. Anyway, I've got... Uh, four Naginata Samurai um, backing up. I think that's four Katana Samurai. These guys have all got 17 to 21. 23? Oh my god, these guys are no Dachi units. <laughs> and then we've also got um, some Naginata attendants up front, as I was saying in the um, live com 3. Um, you know, Naginata units are good, but don't rely on them too heavily. They are good at uh, meat shielding or capturing buildings. And then we've also got some Matchlock Warrior Monks. I forgot these guys were here because, you know, you select all your troops, you click them back, and then you start arranging your army in front of you. So these guys were unfortunately sort of left behind, um, and I will be charging them up. But cavalry-wise, I've got I think, two Yarry Cav and a Fire Cav, so... Um, these guys are pretty vetted up, um, apart from the fire cab, because I don't use fire cab too much. Um, a lot of you will probably recognise this battle. This is the battle where um, I did tell... Actually, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm not even going to tell you guys what happened in this battle. But um, let's just kind of let him move up a bit. So this guy's got a lot of uh, spear units. But let's look at what he's got. So uh, light cav, so he's got three light cav. He's got um, his avatar, obviously. He's got... One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh no, that's the sixth one. Um, seven, and so he's got seven uh, Yari Samurai. It looks like, and I think he's got one or two Yari Ashigaru, and then he's also got uh, two Lone Sword. I think is that two Lone Sword? Yep, two Lone Sword. And actually, no, he's got three Lone Sword. Sorry. So that's what my opponent has brung. So that's a very defensive army, you would have thought. Uh, pretty nice colour scheme, actually. But what we'll do is that this is an absolutely incredible battle. This is just going to show you how you use cavalry. You know, looking at this, you're thinking, Vendetta, you are off your block. You know, this is just insane. You can't beat an army like this. Or why, you know, your, your cavalry is basically just wasted. I mean... I would say straight off the bat, um, if I was spectating this battle, uh, to be honest, I'd say I'd, Vendetta would probably win. Captain Cabinet's army would win, um, purely out of the fact that, you know, he's got so many Katana Samurai who have got very, very, very good stats, along with some excellent Naginata Samurai to back it up. But um, this cavalry, you'd be thinking, oh, it's pretty useless. Um, but this is what we're going to do. Whenever you use cavalry, you want to be looking for soft targets. So you want to be looking for bow units that are out of place, sword units that are out of place. So I charge these guys in. Again, I'm doing the nice long straight lines rather than any wedge formation. And you can see the surface damage of a nice extended line will really be much more beneficial than doing some unknown wedge formation where you'll get a very limited amount of surface damage. So that's, this is basically why I say you should never actually go into wedge formation unless you're breaking through thin lines of spears. So, for example, Naginata Attendants, nice thin line, break through to get to that soft katana center. That'll be good. So he's going to retreat, and I'm going to charge back in. I then target his Lone Sword on this flank, and I pull them straight back out. I then take my Fire Cav right round the back, and I don't think he's quite realized this yet because of all of this commotion up front. 
and I'll charge him straight into his light cav, and then I'll charge him into his general momentarily. These guys have almost routed, and um, yeah, pretty much what I'm going to be doing is targeting those soft targets. So, the Lone Sword, for example, they're getting a good battering. He can't support them with his Yari Samurai. I want to take these guys in, and I'm going to hit the Lone Sword again. Um, meanwhile, my Fire Cav easily... Um, you know, kind of beats any of his cavalry here because light cav, they got 4 melee attack while the fire cav has got, what, 17 melee attack. Bearing in mind, I have also captured the workshop and the sword dojo. These guys are on low morale, but I've really depleted his army quite a lot. And um, my cavalry is now stuck in the center ground. I'm beginning to pick at both of his light cav, and these guys are now going to hit into his general and start to rip his general a new bumhole. And these guys really, and then my army's now descending on him. So really, it's not looking good. I've broken this formation. I've dealt a lot of pain to him. Um, I mean, these Yarikav have got 200 kills. These ones have got pretty much 200 kills. These have got 80 kills. I'm routing his general at this point. Bearing in mind, he has got a Yari Samurai army. My, my army is still here, and we've dealt heavy losses to him. Immediately, these guys are going to start to rout. We've killed his general, and even these guys are beginning to rout as well, and they're pretty much on full health almost. So the Yari, the cavalry is just running rampant, rampant. You know, as I was saying, you want to be going for those lovely, soft, creamy targets. You know, you want to be going for sword units. You want to be going for bow units, um, generals. They're really who you want to be firing at. And um, now I'm actually just going to do a little bit of a charge. These guys are, of course, going to absolutely wipe out Yari Samurai because you never ever want to be charging any sort of spear unit unless it's sort of Naginata. Um, even so, Naginata, generally you want to be, you know, kind of keeping it um, just kind of in a defensive formation. So I've done, oh, <laughs> I've done a rally. I think I've inspired one or two units maybe. And um, really, most of my army, it's just a go in, clean up job. So that just shows you how incredibly useful it can be to micro your cavalry. And I've still come out, I think, with two of my cavalry units left intact. That is incredible. So there you go, a decisive victory. Even though he had his army was mainly Yari Samurai, um, but you know, just with that micro and the cav hitting those soft targets, getting in, killing the general that routed and broke his army immediately, and I barely had to use any of my foot soldiers. So let's go into the replay and oh, the results even, and I hope you've enjoyed. So here we are in the results screen. As you can see, he brought a lot more men than me. He brought just under a thousand more men. And um, really, look at the losses. I lost 200 men and he lost nearer to 1,000. Again, this shows you how good cavalry can be, given that this was a, uh, a kind of Yari Samurai army. Now, so we go to the kills. Wow. These guys, all together, my, um, my Yari kind of cav and my fire cav, they got easily over 500 kills there. Again, hitting those soft targets, hitting the sword units, hitting the general, taking out the light cav, and taking out any bow units. So really, that's what you want to be doing with your Yari cav. I think kind of taking out enemy cavalry can be good, but at the same time, it can be a very, very bad idea. As long as you bring enough kind of spear units to support your infantry, you should be okay, and you don't have to worry about any enemy cavalry. So we look at his army. Um, again, the Yari Samurai really didn't benefit him a lot. He really needed a very tight formation. He needed to protect. This just kind of consolidates the um, the reasoning behind my army formations when I go into the live comms. You know, I put Yari Ashigaru up front. Then I put the kind of sword units in the middle. And then I kind of sandwich them at the back with some more uh, Yari Ash. So that just kind of shows you... Um, how effective cavalry can be, especially to the fact that this was a Yari Samurai army, and I still managed to win with pretty much just cavalry. Um, and then my, obviously my Katani units and my uh, Naginatas then went in, but of course they didn't actually do too much damage, because um, half the enemy army had already routed. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, legendary kind of tactic video, and um, I'm going to be doing another analytical battle soon, and it is going to be on a on how to combat sort of, uh, oh, what's it called? Melee defense army, so like spear units. And I do have the perfect battle in mind, and you will like it. So I hope you've enjoyed, and bye for now.